DW Radio, your information station. Hello, everybody, and welcome to WW Radio Live, and happy Halloween. I am Nub Nub, the Ewok. <laughs> Actually, I'm Lou Mangello from WDW Radio. I'm joined tonight. Uh oh. I'm joined tonight. <laughs> I am joined tonight by uh, a fellow Ewok, Glenn Whalen, and the queen of the Wookiees, Becky Mankin wow. from Emmy High and Mouse Fan Travel. Happy Halloween to all of you who are watching live in the box. It's getting so hot in here, my eyes are fogging. <laughs> <laughs> I want to welcome you to a. On a very special WDW Radio Live, because today is, of course, Halloween. I don't normally dress like this on Wednesday nights, uh, but I'm here to help you have the best possible Disney experience with my podcasts, live broadcasts, where I normally don't look like this, uh, videos, blog, events, books, CDs, and more. You can find it all over at WDWRadio.com. But this week, we're here to talk about this week's Walt Disney World news, which appropriately whew, ties in. To my, uh, to my Ewok costume, and I have to thank Crystal Von Oy, who made and sent this to me. Um, it's so lifelike, it's, it's, here, wash that, oh, uh, something. Uh, early? <laughs> but it is appropriate that we are, that I am dressed like an Ewok tonight, as opposed to every other Wednesday night, because obviously the huge, monstrous, unprecedented news this week is news that excites Disney geeks and Star Wars geeks like myself because obviously on Tuesday the Walt Disney Company announced that they agreed to acquire Lucasfilm for 4.05 billion with a B billion dollars in cash Lucas is going to receive 40 million Disney shares and the rest is going to be paid out in cash I'd like to see that $2 billion check that uh, Bob Iger gets to hand over to George Lucas. Uh, that's actually the the um, transfer of shares is actually going to make George Lucas the second largest individual non-institutional shareholder. So the second largest individual shareholder behind the estate or the trust of Steve Jobs. So that's an interesting sort of combination of people who are little larger stakeholders. I said for a long time that when Steve Jobs passed away, I think the Disney company potentially lost uh, something great for its future as well, too. Uh, this is actually as big as $4 billion is. It's actually the fourth largest deal ever. In 1995, they purchased uh, Capital Cities ABC for $19.7 billion. In 2006, they purchased Pixar for $7.6 billion. And in 2001, they purchased the Fox family for 5.2. This is actually larger than the uh, 3.96 billion that Disney paid in August 2009 for our good friends over at Marvel Comics. So uh, again, before we start moving on to the deal itself and, and what this means for us as Disney fans, again, I think this is something, guys, that nobody, you know, we talked about how we never saw Avatar and Marvel coming out of left field. Nobody on the planet, or may they rest in peace, Alderaan saw this coming. Other than Glenn. Other than, wait, I take that back. Because go back to Star Wars weekends this year or last year, we were talking about bringing uh, Star Wars more into the parks because we've talked about how this marriage has just been perfect and worked for years. And what did you say? Half jokingly, but what did you say? I said that Disney needs to purchase Lucasfilm so that they could focus on the older films. <laughs> So, and uh, they've done that. Obviously, Bob Iger tuned in, and he's like, you know, that Whalen has a good idea. George, what do you think? Right, but I I heard it wrong, and I thought they acquired the Dolphins. <laughs> so I uh, came prepared, and I was wondering why you're wearing that. Now it all makes sense. So. Well, I have a, I have a date later, okay. too, so is, I'm not going to be changing later. This is pretty much normally how I dress. Uh, but uh, timing is everything, right? Okay. Timing is everything. Uh, this has actually been uh, – this is something that, that Iger and Lucas have been talking about for about a year or so. Nice. Like, you know, who knows? It could have been when they came to relaunch Star Tours, yeah. they might have been sitting down over a latte and, or a, a, over a, a churro, over a carrot cake cookie. Over and he says – over a blue milk and uh, uh, the timing is everything because Lucas has been saying for some time now that he wants to get out of the business. He wants to get out of the movie making business. 
And he said, and I quote, For the past 35 years, one of my greatest pleasures has been to see Star Wars passed from one generation to the next. Uh, it's now time for me to pass Star Wars on to a new generation of filmmakers. I've always believed that Star Wars could live beyond me, and I thought it was important to set up the transition during his lifetime. So he's been talking about this for a numbers of years. He's been talking about making some smaller films. We know that he's done a, a couple uh, in the past few years after the Star Wars second trilogy, uh, not that that exists, it was, was over. Um, and they started talking about, with Disney, uh, about a year ago. And this is, look, we've said from the beginning, Disney and Lucas has been the perfect marriage, mm -hmm. right? It, it has been the perfect marriage since they started working together years ago. Uh, this is one of the longest running, most still most profitable franchises in history, from the films to the merchandise to, to everything that sort of trickles down from the original Star Wars films. Yeah, I agree. It's unlike, not also like the Muppets with Jim Henson was another thing where Jim Henson had it prepared to hand off the Muppets to some place where he thought it would be cared for and uh, given the legacy that it deserves. And I think George Lucas was thinking the same way, right. and he he did that with uh, with Star Wars with this with this and Howard the Duck. Of Howard, course. Howard the Duck was the other one. You he was laugh. Concerned. You laugh, Howard. Don't laugh at Howard the Duck. Um, but, you know, we talk about, everybody's talking about this in terms of Star Wars, and we'll talk about what um, this is going to mean as far as the immediate future is concerned, because part of this announcement was not just the acquisition, but, oh, by the way, we're going to not only make another film in 2015, Episode 7, but George Lucas's idea of having that third trilogy, Episode 7, 8, and 9, or 1A, 2B, and 3C, whatever he's going to call it, <laughs> is going to come to pass. So if this is not just, okay, we're going to acquire the franchise, we'll see what we're going to do with it. We've got a game plan, and Kathleen Kennedy, who was a producing partner with Steven Spielberg, uh, she was named co-chair of Lucasfilm back in June. She's going to become president of the Lucasfilm arm within Disney. Uh, it's going to work with George Lucas, who's going to stay on as sort of a creative consultant to help sort of guide the movies going forward. Um but this is, um, it's also the acquisition of other franchises as well, too. So think Indiana Jones. Think Industrial Light and Magic. Think Skywalker Sound, because we're going to talk about the other sort of trickle-down effect of what I think this acquisition is going to bring. Remember when we were talking about New Fantasyland? Remember when that was like the big news? <laughs> um, and so when this happened um, yesterday and I started thinking about it, you know, I sort of tried to break this down into separate elements in my mind. And I started to think originally the history of this relationship, because this is something that goes back to the 80s. And George Lucas said, look, if I'm going to work with anybody, it's going to be Disney. Mm -hmm. Another brand of great storytellers that is interested in creating incredibly high quality, cutting edge family entertainment, right? So they go on to work on things like Captain EO, Indiana Jones, obviously Star Wars, Star Wars Weekends since 2000. Um, and I think that's what, like the, like the working with a James Cameron, mm -hmm. that's what this brings. You are getting one of the, the quintessential storyteller in George Lucas and the, and the franchise. Definitely. And I, I, I do believe you are correct when they, when they were working on the new Star Tours, that was that was an audition. That was how how would this work out? Would the Imagineers be able to work with me? Was what George was saying. I heard him. He said that. <laughs> so uh, so I believe that that had a lot to do with it. And they auditioned with the product, the end product. I think was better than they could have have imagined. And I think he felt this is a comfortable place for me to put that. All right. The other thing I thought of, too, was from a business perspective and from a corporation perspective. And I think what this does is this solidifies Michael Eisner, uh, Michael Eisner, Bob Eisner, Bob, I wow, I'm going to get it right. I'm still, I'm verklempt with the announcement. This solidifies Bob Iger's legacy, right? Because Michael Eisner, look, however it ended with Eisner, he saved this company. He saved this company. He grew the parks. He brought back this renaissance of Disney animation. What Bob Iger does is he grows the company, right? So think about the acquisitions that have taken place since Michael Eisner uh, was named president and chief operating officer back in 2000 and then eventually see... Uh, I, I keep saying Eisner, sorry. Um, he worked with Eisner from 2000 and then succeeded him in 2005. You've got Muppets in 2004, 
Pixar in 2006, Marvel in 2009. And I think this goes back to a philosophy that Walt had, which was you surround yourself by the people who are the very best at what they do, right? Walt admittedly was not the best animator on the planet, right? So what does he do? He surrounds himself by the people who are better at that than he is. And I think that's the philosophy that Iger has. If, if we see that there is a gap that needs to be filled, we see that there are people like Pixar who are doing this well, you bring them into the fold, you merge with them, you have strategic partnerships, whatever it may be, or you acquire them and bring them into the Disney family. Uh, it's, and we have so many people you know, that are Pixar came from the, the relationship with Lucasfilm. And so all these things are starting to come together as if they were intended to be this way from the beginning, at least in somebody's mind. Maybe Walt was planning this a long <laughs> time ago. So, uh, You know, I, and I, I was uh, I was reading a lot and I was talking a lot to people in the last couple of days about this. And they were saying, you know, four billion dollars sounds like a lot. I, I think from a financial, you know, we were talking about who wins in this. I think it's a win-win for everybody. Again, George Lucas gets to cash a $2 billion check, which I'd love to go to the bank with him just to see how that transaction takes place. But I think Disney's going to make that $4 billion back very, very quickly. You're nodding because I think we know, because think about it. Each of the last three Disney films generated about $1.5 billion dollars in box office sales, if you sort of adjust it to today's numbers, right? It's a more lucrative deal than Marvel because of what is brought in and in terms of licensing, international distribution, what can happen with some of the, the 3D and the, the technology, consumer products, interactive gaming, because that's what Disney does best, right? Disney brings these opportunities to go cross-platform with the movies, the consumer products, the theme parks, and TV as well, too. Right. Between the movies alone and the merchandising, I think they're going to make their bank back really quickly just off those two pieces because the merchandising is huge. And then the opportunities that they have in the theme parks beyond that. Sure, we have Star Tours now, but what are we going to have next? Yeah, I, I, true. And... You know, there's there's a lot more to it, again, from a business perspective. So they're going to release episodes 7, 8, and 9, right? They're going to be distributing them now, taking that distribution away from Fox, who has normally been distributing all those films. Disney also distributes films from DreamWorks. So now they're in business with both George Lucas and Steven Spielberg as far as the movie aspect is concerned. As far as merchandise, they have been merging these two brands for years, especially in the theme parks. We see the mashups, crossovers, whatever you want to talk about, especially in terms of Star Wars weekends. We see guys like Stephen Miller and people on the design group team who are fans first, who get it, who are excited about releasing. Look, there's Disney, Star Wars, Muppet mashups. All three of these fam part of the family now are into the fold. It's really interesting. And we talked about this before when we were at Star Wars weekends, how... The focus seemed to be going towards Lucas. Lucas was trying to get you to watch Clone Wars, and it, Clone Wars is great as a great experience, but not many people are watching it. And a lot of people that were showing up at Star Wars weekends were coming away a little disappointed that they weren't seeing A New Hope or Empire Strikes Back. That's what or, we grew up with. That's because what we're we grew used up to with seeing, that. Right. This allows that to return totally. Because they can, in the park, you're allowed to have something that's static. You're allowed to put in something from episode four right, right into the park and build on it. And it's allowed to be sitting there still. Whereas Clone Wars, you always have to be moving to what they're making next. So this allows them to really go into an area that they've 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 been falling away from. So it's an advantage for for Lucasfilm as well. Well, and you're going to be happy to know, and I'm going to be the first to break this because I have exclusive information that they are digitally remastering and going to re-release the Star Wars Holiday Special on Blu-ray. Awesome. So, <laughs> and if you've seen the Holiday oh. Special, <laughs> you know why that's actually really funny. But I think you, you make a good point because we talk about the movies, we talk about the merchandising, we'll talk a little bit about what we think can come to the parks because we've talked about this on shows in the past. But I think something else too is Oh, by the way, Disney also owns ABC. They have Disney XD. You now have other media outlets that you could distribute content, notwithstanding what you can do online, via mobile, interactive gaming. I think there's huge, I think there is, and not to use too broad of a, of a stroke, there is limitless opportunity to what this partnership can bring. I think it's unlimited because they are a family content distributor. That is what Disney does, and it's what they do very well. Here's another example. 
Right. Well, I mean, now we even have Star Wars Angry Birds, so I'm, I'm so waiting. All right, it, it now brings Disney even closer <laughs> yes. to the angry. Listen, when they get Angry Birds, then they've got then they've gotten someplace. Exactly. Angry Birds meets Swampy the Gator, and everybody goes home happy. But you know, we talked about the Marvel acquisition, right? With Marvel, they acquire five thousand characters. They make a, a huge footprint into the young boy demographic of superheroes. Look at what happened with the Avengers. Look at what's happening with the talk and the buzz of Iron Man 3. Those franchises have been completely Mm -hmm. rebooted and reintroduced to a new generation. With Star Wars, it's not limited to Jar Jar Binks and the Jawas. There are 17,000 characters that span decades And uh, thousands of planets, there is this whole other Star Wars universe, there's online gaming, there's all these other platforms. And yeah, you start thinking about what they can bring to the Disney parks. We're talking about next gen, we're talking about these different levels of interactivity that could come to the theme park. So our first thought goes to Hollywood Studios. There's that area in the back, uh, you've got all the area by Indiana Jones, by Star Tours, by Muppets, we've... I've said, and I would love more than anything else in this world. So, uh, yogurt, if you're listening, we <laughs> yogurt, merchandising. Sorry, obscure spaceballs reference. Um, this is why I didn't date in high school. So, uh, at Disney's Hollywood Studios, you have an air, you have a chance to make an entire section there. Mm-hmm. Backlot Tour may not be long for this world. Likes Motors Action may not be long for this world. You've got a lot of space. I think the Backlot Express should be the Star Wars Cantina. Sign me up now because I'll totally be there. <laughs> you could make not even just a Star Wars land, but you could make a Lucas land. That Indiana Jones franchise is, I think, far from over, unlike other franchises at other theme parks in Orlando, which have reached end of life. Don't laugh, Universal what? Girl. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Harry Potter is at the end of its... Uh, as at oh, the end of it's Barney. <laughs> yeah, Barney. Barney's still there. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think... Right, right I, I think there is uh, incredible longevity that the Star Wars franchise has. And, with, and we'll see it We'll see it in the parks because that's what it... We all struggled to, to think, where are they going to put Marvel right. into these parks. Where can we put it? Can you put a Thor attraction? We have a hard time doing that. But when as soon as they announced Star Wars, everybody went, okay, boom, <laughs> boom, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. And we started populating, in our mind, we started populating the parks with new attractions based on Star Wars films. So I think we... We probably won't see a Marvel attraction appear inside the the studios before we see a Star Wars one. Right. And that's what this does, too. This now, especially in Walt Disney World, obviates the, the immediate concern for what do we do with the Marvel franchise that we are not allowed to bring here until they work out, which they eventually will, their licensing... Um, when they work out their licensing with Universal, who currently owns the rights east, east of the Mississippi... Uh, for these characters coming to the parks. Um, I I think when I was talking about before, too, about the technology, Industrial Light and Magic, Skywalker Sound, like these people are on the cutting edge, the forefront, not only of movie-making technology, but think about what they could do coupled with Imagineering and what kind of experiences they might be able to bring to the parks, too. I mean, George Lucas may not have made the best decisions when he made the new trilogy, but he was very responsible for what Pixar is today. Because he, when they were making Pixar, when it was at its, in its birth, he was the one who wasn't accepting where they were going. And go, no, we can't do it like this. I'm not putting it in my film until we did this. There's no digital effects in the second film. In Empire Strikes Back, there are no computer effects. Uh, and that was because they used them in the first film, and then he said he wasn't happy with them. So they didn't return until what becomes Pixar became very helpful. So we'll see a lot of that. Yeah. And I think what you're going to see a lot of is like what we're showing for those of you who are watching live or watching the video immediately. I mean, literally immediately after the announcement, people ran to their computers and started drafting up. You see mashups like the Star Wars, like the Darth Vader with the Mickey ears. Somebody made up a potential Disney Star Wars themed world, another theme park inside of Walt Disney World 
There have been a lot of incredibly funny mashups as well, too. Uh, the Disney hashtag that I was following on Twitter is hashtag Disney Star Wars. Here are just a couple of the ones that I pulled out along the way. Uh, Snow White and the Seven Ewoks, the Sorcerer's Jedi Apprentice, Alice in Wookiee Land. I don't know why I looked at you. <laughs> Honey, I Shrunk the Jawas, Star Wars, the Goofy Menace, Beauty and the Droid, Leah and the Tramp. The question has is, is already been asked. Is Leah now officially a Disney princess? Has she sort of been adopted into the fold? Uh, Finding Lando. Uh, the Saber in the Stone. Star Wars Episode 7, The Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> Captain Jack <laughs> meets Han Solo's. Uh, Star Wars Episode 7, The Jedi Wore Tennis Shoes. Uh, I felt a disturbance in the Force as if millions of geeks were shocked in an instant. <laughs> I think... Howard the Duck, walk around character. First thing that's coming to Disney's Hollywood Studios. And of course, the Death Star overlay on Spaceship Earth. Yes. Oh, see, that, that would rock. <laughs> I, I, said it ha I said it jokingly on Twitter last night at 11 o'clock at night. And right. people were like, awesome ideas. I'll be like, you're an idiot. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't mean it. <laughs> a dream is a wish your hut makes. Oh, oh nice. So I like that. that was... <laughs> but, you know. Look, we are, I mean, at least you and I, forget it. You and I and a lot of people watching are of the same age, the same generation. Disney, 29. again, 29. for the 15th yeah. time in a row. <laughs> uh, Disney has married, encapsulated, brought into the fold all of the important elements from my childhood, yeah. right? It's Disney, it's Muppets, it's... Marvel superheroes, and now it's Star Wars. Like the circle is now complete. I, I'm ready to go. Like I You're can. Geek heaven right I am, now. and I'm not the only one. I mean, oh, I know. literally, five guys. there's five, five guys. They could. They acquired they five could, guys. They, they required five guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's done. It's, if they bring five guys to the park, I, that would be it. I have never seen Twitter blow up like that in the Disney fan community. Yeah. I mean, even when they did the Avatar thing, and I know it was controversial, there was a lot of chatter going on with that. This, however, exploded. And yeah. it was everywhere. So that just tells you that there's more people like you. So well, uh, listen, okay. there's lots of people like me wearing <laughs> Ewok costumes. At, at a, but when I saw the tweet, and the first tweet that I saw, the official tweet was from D23. And I clicked on it, and I said, oh, I wasn't reading in my car. I was pulled over with my blinkers on. But I looked over, and I'm like, Disney acquires Lucasfilm, I, and I figured it was a joke, or it's an acquisition of something. And my kids were talking to me, and I just tuned them out because I'm like, I'm trying to comprehend the enormity of an announcement. I, I mean, far yeah. beyond what Marvel represents, far beyond what uh, uh, Muppets represents or anything else, because it is the, I think, the two largest, most recognizable and important franchises it's like Ebony and Ivory, man. It's like coming together yeah, as you're one. You're tearing up right now. I am. <laughs> well, just imagine, forget about yesterday, pretend yesterday didn't happen, what? and the announcement is my that they're going to make Star Wars Episode Seven. That's already right. huge yeah, news. Huge. It's yeah. already like, oh my gosh, I didn't think they were ever going to do that. <clears throat> and that was only a small, that ended up being a very small portion of the announcement because the big news is that Disney has acquired that. My favorite character... I, Listen, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Spider-Man, and Disney, oh, my brain, I, literally, my brains are falling out of my head. I, I, I can't, uh, so I, the, the, you know, the question of the week that I was going to ask was, you know, what do you think of the Disney Lucasfilm acquisition? But I, I will tell you, unlike something like Avatar, which did get a lot of um, interesting feedback in the social networks, the response to this has been overwhelming. And I think overwhelmingly favorable, not just in the Twitterverse, in the geeky verse, but Wall Street and yeah. the entertainment industry. Like this is a good thing for everybody across the board. That's Especially, I, how old have I been saying? It's a good time. I can't hit Scott till you're here. It's a good time to be a Disney fan. It's a great time to be a Disney fan. Give me my. Ewok. I like that. Give me my like Ewok. That. Give me something. Your head. Give me my. <laughs> I wanted my lightsaber, but I'll take the Ewok thing. So, um, there you go. while some people say they, you know, while the line from Star Wars is, "I've got a bad feeling about this," I think we all have a very good I've got feeling. A good about feeling this. about this. Who was that supposed Who? to be? That was uh, James Earl Jones. <laughs> <It was Catherine. laughs> so, but it, what what aspect or what opportunity 
do you find most exciting about this announcement? And if it's look, if it's as simple as episode seven, that's fine. Um, I don't think it's episode seven. I think. Are you still it, doing Catherine Hepburn? Uh, this is my this oh, is still. Okay. <laughs> I think it's going to be a wonderful experience for all. So I think. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think what I'm looking forward to most is sorry. watching the next generation of um, fans who are making because the, the Clone Wars is actually made up by fans. It's very obvious if you do ever watch the Clone Wars, they're definitely designed by people who loved those original films. <laughs> Watching them make a seventh film and moving forward with that uh, while they're changing, making changes in the park, that's going to be an excellent experience. What about you? I can't wait for the three movies because I do want to see the story continue. I love the characters. I love the universe. I love... Favorite the- Star Wars character? Really? You want to know? I want to know. Really? Orlando Calrissian. No. No. <laughs> no. And what? it's not Jar Jar Binks. If, if, if he could be erased from any piece of the universe, I'm just saying. That's just personal preference. I, I like... I like Han Solo. <laughs> Sorry, I There's do. a shocker. <laughs> what? The there's, bad boy. I love the bad boy. What can I say? There's something that, uh, you know, that surprises there's a, us all. There's a few. I like Queen Amidala. I like, from the earlier ones, I like her character because she's strong. She represents good and all things that are good, even though the man killed her, which was bad. You know. <laughs> if you think about it, if you really think about it, what Star Wars is all about, hmm. just a guy digging a chick. That's it. Has if that's it. It's true. If if he doesn't go gaga over Amidala, Star Wars never happens. What? It take take yeah. That's the whole arc of the all six films. If he does not go crazy for Amidala, just like all right, listen, she doesn't want to date me. I'm done. That's fine. He never turns into Darth Vader. Wait a minute. But Wait, you, you know, don't think that you know that you know that he's Darth Vader, right? Yes. Okay. You, you don't think that the Emperor would have found another way to inject evil into this superhuman no. person? It's impossible. That's the only possible way. It's is love. It's not is true. The only it's way impossible. to inject evil is through love. Is that what you're saying? He told me you killed him. <laughs> no, I. <laughs> No! No! <laughs> no, you're supposed to be this, like this. Let's cut him this is going to be a fun um, <laughs> argument for later. Definitely. No, what it's not true. It, he doesn't have a hand. He doesn't have a hand. <laughs> You've never even You've seen never the seen movies. These movies. never even seen the movies Don't before. Don't you start with me too. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been watching some of the, the, the comments in the box and, and what people are, are talking about here. Uh, I think the most interesting thing I've seen in the past minute or two was Harold Howard versus Donald. Who would win? <laughs> <laughs> Donald. <laughs> so, yeah, um, we, could, uh, we could talk about this and we will be talking about this for a long time because I think this is still sort of – I think we're still taking the news all in. Um, I, I will tell you that some of the things I saw – Online, where well, that means Avatar Land is done, which I don't. I don't think one has anything to do with the other, no. and I still don't think. And I and not to digress into an Avatar Land discussion, I think people have to look at the Avatar announcement in a similar way to this. It's it's a strategic partnership as opposed to an acquisition. But what the 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 potential marriage or the courting right mm-hmm. now of James Cameron brings and you know you are a movie guy you you understand the importance of story is what kind of a storyteller yeah. James Cameron is he is like and I'm not comparing but the Walt Disney was all about story George Lucas is all about story Steven Spielberg is all about story mm-hmm. that's what James Cameron is going to bring and Avatar Land is not dead and I don't think it and I don't think people should be excited by the thought that potentially it could be yeah, I don't think it's dead either. And uh, James Cameron is is heavy into the technology of the future. I think that is something that if we do continue on with Avatar Land, that we take advantage of that. And maybe James Cameron is going to be involved in whatever Star Wars appears in our theme park as well. I think it's, uh, you know, same thing. It's all about technology, cutting edge, um, what he could potentially bring, but... You know, going back full circle to what Lucas brings, I, I'm happy that Lucas is still staying on. You know, he's still going to sort of keep his, uh, you know, hands and his uh, his signature on the Star Wars franchise. But I think maybe being able to step back a little bit and go back into less of a um, business role as opposed to maybe more of a creative input role might actually help 
some of the things that might have hurt in the last three films. Right. Is that diplomatic enough? Very much so. And I also <laughs> think that, that very creative people like that, if you take some business away from them, I know that he was speaking very much about his th- flamp three P, if I can say the word, and how much he enjoys those endeavors. If you take care of the business and move that away from him, let him do what he's really passionate about, he's going to be even more creative and inject more life into the uh, the story going forward. So, so that's another win-win. I don't... This is not such a big deal, but while they're creating this Clone Wars thing, there, there's several interviews that show, and he uh, they just talk, discussed this at the recent Star Wars convention, that George Lucas's role there is pretty much as an overseer. Everything mm-hmm. has to be passed by him, but he reveals very sporadically elements of the Star Wars universe to them. So he, you know, whether he's making it up on the spot or something like that, that's been his role, and I think he's probably liked that. Mm-hmm. And he's probably going to fit well into that by being part of an organization that is working. The, he'll reveal things as they're needed. He's not just like, um, you know, he can make changes. There's a, a lot of interesting things, a lot of interesting discussions that happen. Yeah. I'm not even listening to you because all I was thinking about was, what's the countdown to Star Wars weekends this year? Like, how <laughs> different yeah. is Star Wars weekends going to be this year? Yeah. From, I mean, we saw, like, we've been excited about the merchandise and stuff. It, give me my lightsaber. It's right there in the corner. Right over there. I need it. Yeah, and you know what? People in the box are saying, I am totally geeking out. I, I am I am excited beyond words because this is not about the show. This is not about anything else. This is me being a seven-year-old kid and the two things that I love and I'm so passionate about coming together. Um, I, I could not have asked for anything more. So I'm I'm putting on my Ewok helmet again. <laughs> ah! Don't hit Glenn with or me. With, can I hold your lightsaber, please? What? Hey, <laughs> come on. Wait till the wait till the show's off the air. I, I know I have a dog. Where's the where's my Yoda one? That actually fits better in my hand because it's much smaller. Anyway, all right. I can't see or breathe in this thing. <laughs> but um, I, I have got a very good feeling about this. I've got a very good feeling about this. But I want to hear more from you. Shh. From those of you who are watching live or listening uh, via the audio feed on the YouTube channel or on the blog, give me your thoughts. Let's keep this conversation going. Give me your thoughts by posting in the comments on the website or on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash lumangelo or tweet me um, at twitter.com slash lumangelo. Be sure to visit the website over at www.radio.com for the blog contest. Subscribe to the show on iTunes live events lots coming in 2013 oh my god I can't wait for Star Wars weekends and what we're going to be able to do to plus up Star Wars weekends I'm going to leave this costume on until until Star Wars weekends arrives I Um, I can't do it (laughs) so uh, I want to thank Glenn Whalen from Pretty Good Movie Ride and Googlein G-O-O-G-L-I-N W-W ride it's off just go right there she's from MEI and Mouse Fan Travel uh, I'm going to see both of you again, God help us, on the cruise. We're down to three days. Three weeks. Isn't it three weeks? No, it's three oh, days. Please give me three weeks. I'm, I'm <laughs> woefully unprepared. Hopefully I'll see a lot of you guys on the cruise as well, too. Stay tuned Wednesday night. I'm going to try. I'm going to try and broadcast next Wednesday live from the Disney Dream. We're going to have some surprises, some announcements. I'm going to tell you about, like, the Disney Fantasy Cruise no. next year. Yes. Oh, no, I am. <laughs> and we may even have a couple of special guests there too maybe maybe more even more special than these two and these guys are pretty special too um so with that i want to thank you guys i want to thank all of you who have been uh, watching live in the box i hopefully see you next week and god i'm i'm so happy that my ewok is now an official disney character and when i say may the force be with you i mean that sincerely thank you guys so much for watching so until next time see ya